<laughs> One person who may be very nervous about appearing on television is our online qualifier, Tom O'Shea. He's a little bit short on chips after that horrible skirmish with the Kings earlier. Pass. Down to just uh, six or seven big blinds. She's been very, very patient. Big hand for Brindley. Race to 5.50. Pass. And here is Tom O'Shea. Oh, this hand a bit of a mirage against a raise, but O'Shea knows that Brindley can raise with all sorts of cards. Clearly giving it serious consideration, but I think he'll throw this away. So he's declared all in. He Pass. must have seen Roy Brinley play on television before. He's unlucky to find the man with such a big hand. 14, he is. It's fair enough. It's a fair enough move. And uh, Brinley giving him credit is, 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 for a big hand, thinking about it, but has to call. Well, this is disastrous for O'Shea. Once again, praying for a king to save him. This time, of course, there's three of them in the deck to help the online qualifier. It was just two last time. King Queen. What a nasty first experience with the TV cameras. Flop is ten. Oh. Check deuce. Got a straight draw here. Yeah, good flop for O'Shea now. Ace, nine. Straight draw. The king, no good now, of course. That gives Brindley the straight, but the ace or the nine would save the hedge fund manager. And I've got to say, he deserves it. I mean, he's been so unlucky. Who would begrudge him a, a little, an upper run at this? But no. No, they both make a pair of queens, but Roy Brindley's kicker sees Tom O'Shea, the first player out at this table. Unlucky. I remember my first late night poker. He certainly played better than I did. There's no way I feel I can get away from the kings against aces, uh, especially with Ian re raising. Uh, he'd been the guy who was most active at the table, and uh, he could have had ace king, ace queen, pair of queens. So. Uh, yeah, you've got, to, you've, got to, you've got to take a stand at that point. So they're down to six now. Carl Marinholtz is the lowest on chips. Ian Fraser still riding high at the top. Pass. Carl Marinholtz hasn't played too many hands yet. Well, I think he's playing classic. Well, I was going to say... Uh, slow at the beginning, but no one's going to play that hand slowly. Pass. Pass. Of course, it's hard Pass. for him to get action because he hasn't played that many hands. Oh, poor Jen Mason. Oh, no, this is cruel. She's got just over 5,000 in chips total. Can she get away from this? 1,600. Well, she um, certainly believes she's in front at the moment, and who can blame her? Manholt's doing his depressed panda impersonation, trying to look like he's bothered about this. He's uh, only bothered about getting all the chips. Manholt may know that Jen Mason is not the kind of crazy player who's going to be re-raising at this early stage with a weak hand. Cool. Yeah, he's flat calling because he thinks he can put on a range of hands and he won't be too scared of the flop. That's right, and of course Mason's best hope now here is to flop a king or maybe an ace so that she's fearful. <laughs> or of course she could always flop a queen. Well, three <laughs> ladies for our lady player. Check. Cool. Oh, all, all in, in, says Cole Marinholtz. Yeah. She it's checked it same. brilliantly, set the trap, he fell in. You can't so blame well. him, of course, Barney. Well, that's just an absolute cold deck. Whoever lost this would have been unfortunate. <laughs> of course, Marinholtz isn't uh, out of it yet. He can still hit a nice turn or river, but uh, oh, Nine. so cruel for him. Only the ace now will save Carl Marinholtz. It's no good, and another player goes out. The brutality of this game. Well, he's done nothing wrong, and this is the first time we've seen him smile. It's disappointing to go out. I think that the, the manner of how I've gone out makes it easier to take in a way in that uh, I played the hand in a specific way um, thinking that she did have a big hand and that when the flop come down you know I, I know I'm, she's a massive underdog to, to, to catch up so I've, I've got to give her that chance it's never not gonna um, go in on the flop I'm just you know um, hoping that it's the it's, it's the time where she doesn't hit but unfortunately she did That dramatic hand has installed Jen Mason as our new chip leader, over 10,000. 
What's interesting, Barney, is that our former late-night poker champion, Simon Trumper, has yet to play a single hand. Well, he's playing classic one-table strategy, Vicky. Very, very tight at the beginning. And uh, he'll start to push when the blinds get bigger. Fraser, on the other hand, any two cards will do. Yeah, Fraser's found the two crabs. And look, here is Trumper with a better hand. Yes, if he, if he did but know it, he's in great shape against Fraser, but of course, oh, out of position that. against the Razor with a player behind you, you need to flop a set to feel comfortable with that kind of hand. Jen Mason, though, the chip leader, can easily okay, afford to call defender big blind. Okay, no what I had. Well, Fraser's picked up a very small flush draw, and against Seven. one player, Seven. he's more confident about betting this than he might have been against two. End of that one. Yep, Fraser picks that one up. Jen Mason not going to squander her chip lead by making bluffs when someone could have a very big no, hand. No, it, wasn't that. it was showing one guy went and the bait. Narrows the gap a little up. bit. Fraser creeping up behind Jen uh, Mason. Yeah, it was a uh, documentary thing. Pass. And, uh, he went and both Brindley and Trumper have been very, very quiet in the face of the whirlwind that's been Mr. Fraser and Bo finding enough hands really that he doesn't have to get involved when he doesn't have one. The classic line, Ooh. why do I have to play double? Ian Fraser wants to take on Bo Selstead with a Queen 10, he'll certainly do it with an Ace King. What do you think of Jack Arama? Have you slept with him? Yes. <laughs> Measuring. Measuring. Yep, Measuring up for a big re-raise there and uh, Selstead knows that if he wants to play this hand uh, he's not going to get Fraser off it. Come no, it's really all in for Selstead if he wants to play. He's only got about four and a half thousand total. He really? needs to put Fraser on yeah. more or less exactly the kind of hand that he's got. It will be very bad if you fold it if I'm pushing, so I'm assuming you're not that bad. Do you think Selstead's giving away a little bit too much about his hand at this point? Kind of doesn't matter because he knows if he pushes that he's going to get called. But yes, I mean, he is more or less telling Fraser the kind of strength of his hand. If Fraser's to believe him. Come on, you can't Hang be on, that he's... cocky and not cool now. Oh, Simon! <laughs> he's got to stop advising these players. Yeah, <laughs> naughty, <laughs> naughty, naughty, Mr. Trumper. But I mean, I don't know what Fraser is thinking Basically about, really. He is going to call whatever you do. But I won't. Can I have a count, please? And then I want the clock put on me straight four, away. Four, six, seven, eight, five, I think. Well, this delay by Fraser is going to make Bo think that he's in even better shape than he is. He's going to be putting Fraser now on a, on a weak ace or maybe even a very small pair because uh, Fraser should uh, call quickly with the hand that he's got. Yeah, it really doesn't look like ace king with this long thing from Fraser. Is that right? looks like it's less. But of course, Selstat has played... A cautious game in this situation, he's raised and he's re re raised. Fraser's seen aces and kings turned over already in this game, he must be frightened of that. I think he was always calling, he just wanted to um, show that he knew he was up against something big. And here it is, Bo Selstead all in with the two sevens, the Nevises, hoping to see a small flop to stay in the game. I think he's disappointed not to be in better shape after that dwell up, but uh, oh, dangerous. Extra outs for Fraser, Jack for the straight, Ace or King for the bigger pair. Oh, there it is. Only a seven now will help the valiant young Swede. Just wrong. One pip too high. Well, I really like Selstead's play today, Vicky. He's really played with his head and... Uh, he hasn't always made the right decision, but he's hung on to his chips and made sure when he did get them all in, he got them in good. Ian was thinking with like calling for like 25% of the pot, so I, uh, I don't know what, what he's doing there. I thought he had like maybe ace 10 or a really small pair when he's like taking all that time. Uh, for me, it's like a super easy decision, but it ended up me being a small favourite and I lost some. <laughs> so just four players left already in this party poker late night poker heat one. Roy Brindley is the short stack. Ian Fraser has got a pretty dominant chip lead. 
I mean, to be fair to Brindley, I mean, he's still got all the chips. He's 